It's that time again. It's time to get all up in my grill. Hello and welcome to Big Friendly Grub. I hope you are well. And you may remember some videos ago now, God knows how long it was, it's 2020, all time merges into one. But some time ago, I tested this rotisserie grill on a homemade doner kebab and it did very, very well. But it's a rotisserie grill and it feels rather negligent for me not to test it on other things. What do you think of when you think of a rotisserie grill? You think of rotisserie chickens. I'm going to be testing this out today on a rotisserie chicken, but also I'm going to be making some kebabs as well. I'm going to be doing chicken satay kebabs and also some paneer kebabs as well. But I'm not going to stop there. I'm also going to try it out on some pineapple as well. Yep, I'm also going to try glazing some pineapple in some nice buttery sugary glaze as well and seeing what it does with that to see whether we get a nice like grilled pineapple and see if it works on that as well. So I'm gonna be trying three things to put this thing through its full paces and see if it does more than just doner kebabs. I'm really interested to see if it will do a whole chicken. I'm gonna start off with that because it's gonna take the longest. Hi, no mucking about, we're gonna get straight into this. So you can see I've got a chicken hanging up on here. It's not very dignified for the poor thing, I'm sorry, especially if you're a vegetarian or a vegan. If you're a vegan, I'm really sorry. But we've got it hanging up and I've done what I usually do with these sorts of things and I've put some butter just under the skin which will hopefully create some lovely moist flavour for it. But as I turn this on I'm also going to be basting it in some butter as well with some garlic, sage and some salt as well. Just seasoning and I'm just going to be basting it as it goes around. I'm going to try giving it about 45 minutes to see how it gets on. It's not the biggest chicken and any bigger it probably wouldn't fit in there so that's about the right sort of size. So close the door for starters. It onto 45 minutes and there it goes off it goes going around I'm going to leave that to go for about five minutes and I'll come back and start doing the first baste I really want to see how this turns out because I love a chicken and if this does it in a kind of quicker more even way then it's definitely worth a go so let's let that do its thing it's really quite exciting I've never done anything like this before So it's been a couple of minutes and it's already starting to cook that skin. I can see it starting to release some juices and things like that. So I think this is gonna work. It just depends on how long it's gonna take. So 45 minutes might not be long enough, it might need an hour, but I think 45 minutes is a good place to start, but I'll keep an eye on it. I'm wringing my hands because of the anticipation. I really hope this works. Right, it's been about five minutes, so I'm going to give it its first base. Quick brushing all the way around with some of that garlicky, sagey butter, making a mess everywhere. Kind of got a race against time as it goes around. There we go, back with the door. Now I've basted that, I'll probably leave it for 15 minutes and come back and baste it again. Look at that, yes, so excited. Oh, that looks incredible. It smells amazing in here. Oh, that's turned out so much better than I thought it would. I hope it's cooked all the way through, but looking at that skin and just the smell, oh, that smells incredible. The one way to tell would be to get out a thermometer. Thermometer, I can't speak properly, I'm so excited. So the internal temperature of a chicken should be about 75 degrees C or about 165 degrees Fahrenheit. So if I go in about, I don't know, like here, that says 72, it's about 70. I'm gonna give it another five minutes, I think, just to make sure that that is cooked all the way through. So maybe, maybe an, even another 10, I reckon that'll be fine. Right, that has to be done now, surely. Look at that, oh, it's, just, it's incredible. Right, let's get the thermometer. There we go, 
there that's that's done that is done that looks so good right i'm going to leave that to cool down otherwise i'm going to horribly burn myself and i'm going to wrap it in some foil so it can rest and then we can try the next thing i've got to clear all this up as well that's going to be the fun part right now we're going to test this on something quite different we're going to be doing some kebabs some skewers really because i have seven skewers which is an upsettingly uneven number but i am going to be testing these out on some paneer and also some satay chicken which is one of my favorite things so for the paneer i have had this marinating in a variety of spices and also some yogurt and i'm just going to pop these onto some skewers with some red onion and some green pepper that's not green that's red i'm not colorblind either well done that i'm going to do three of these and then i'll do three of the chicken and then i'll see what i've got left over and then i can do one more if i've got room for another one so i'm going to pop on a nice cube of paneer and some onion pepper and lather rinse repeat so this is my third and final skewer of paneer tikka this is what it should be my accuracy may vary because i've never made paneer tikka before but i do love ordering it at an indian restaurant and now for the chicken satay my favorite so i've got some chicken breasts marinated in various spices again in a peanutty sauce which i've mixed together and this is one of my favorite things i'm gonna get these chicken breasts onto the skewers as best as i possibly can all the way through i'll probably get two strips on there Right, that made a huge mess, but I have three chicken satay skewers and four paneer tikka skewers. And I'm gonna set these off now for about, I don't know, 15 minutes. They need cooking through, but it's not as big, obviously, and the marinade should do the job, so I won't need to baste them either. So 15 minutes, maybe 20, but I'm gonna do 15 and see how they go. Off they go, close that door, and just leave them to do their thing. They should be amazing, love paneer. Oh, they look very, very good. They've slipped down a bit, but that's fine. I think I'm gonna give those five more minutes because I could do with some more charring on those. They look very nice, but needs more charring. Let's do another five minutes. Looks really good though. Getting a lot of close-ups of my face in this. I'm really sorry. There we go, now that looks good. Oh yeah, there we go. Look at that. Oh, that's the one thing that's missing from this is something to help turn this manually. But that looks good to me. So I'm go again, I'm gonna leave those to cool, wrap them up so they retain the heat and rest a bit. And then I'll do the final thing. Last but not least today on our rotisserie listery, or something, um, is this bad boy. Yep, I'm gonna be grilling a pineapple which is something i've wanted to do for a while ever since i got that so i am going to get this all trimmed down hopefully it is ripe enough do, do, do. i'll take all the edges off i hate doing this it's such a faff it's all the little eyes in it that's the pain in the butt bit Right, that's the skin off, but I've still got to get all these little eyes out, which is the hard part. Right, I've got a lot of the eyelets out best as I can, and that gives it some nice grooves as well for our glaze to go into, which I'm going to be making next. It's going to be nice and simple, and it will give us a nice caramelised, hopefully, pineapple. If I do anything else, I'm going to try and get this through here. Hopefully it will go. I think I'm going to need a little bit of assistance in getting this through. So I'm going to take out this hard bit here. Hopefully it will skewer through. There we go. Try and carefully. There we go. Push this down onto that. And put the other end on. Carefully. You've just got to take a bit out there. Otherwise you can't get it through. It's too hard down that bit. Right, for our caramel glaze, it's gonna be super simple. I'm just gonna add in 
some brown sugar and some butter into a pan. I'm also going to add a couple of teaspoons worth of cinnamon to flavour that up because that will go lovely with the pineapple. I'm also going to put a dash of sea salt in there as well just to mix things up. And then when that starts to melt down I'll add some water just to kind of help it along then that should make us a nice caramel that we can coat our pineapple in. And then a couple of tablespoons worth of water. Really we just wait until the sugar is dissolved rather than turning it into a full caramel. It will caramelise when it's actually getting cooked on the outside of the pineapple so really we only need to do half the job here. There we go, that's come up to a bubble, that sugar will be dissolved. So now I can turn this off. I'm just gonna steamroller my pineapple in this glaze. And if I keep this warm, I can keep brushing it on as the pineapple goes round on the grill. Right, I've got my pineapple on there and I'm just gonna baste all those bits that I didn't get to before. The only thing it needs is a button or something just to help it round manually. Right, I'm gonna close this door and set it going for 30 minutes, but I'm gonna come back every 10 minutes to baste it some more in that caramel. Ah, now there we go, that's more like it. That has got a good caramelization on the outside now. Oh yeah, that looks really good. Right, again, I'm gonna leave that to cool down and then I'll get that off and then I can try everything. Everything is done, it's just now it's time for me to try it all and I can't wait, it all smells incredible. In fact, I'm gonna get a bit closer to that. Look at that, that looks fantastic. It probably could have another 15 minutes if I'm honest, but that looks pretty good to me. Now that, is a tasty looking haul. That has all come out really well, at least in appearance. It all looks fantastic. But now is the time for truth. I have to taste this. So it's obvious I've got to start with a skewer because that is basically the start. So let's bring these to the front. You can see how nicely, oh, nearly dropped it. You can see how nicely that is crisped up on the outside. It's obviously all cooled down now because I've been waiting around to try everything. But I'm sure it's still going to taste fantastic. So let's get a bit of the paneer, a bit of the onion, a bit of the pepper. Mmm. Well, oh, yeah. You can taste that marinade all the way through that. That is absolutely delicious. That's turned out really well. That paneer is cooked just right. Even though it's cooled down, it's still lovely. It's the right sort of softness. Right, now let's try one of these sauteed chicken skewers. This is one of my favourite things, so hopefully I haven't balls this up. Oh yeah, mm. Mm. you've got all that sauté flavour in there and it's lovely, perfectly cooked. Absolutely gorgeous. It's done a great job on those. Just gonna stand here and eat this, don't mind me. Now it's time for the main course, hopefully you can see this. I'm hoping this will be nice succulent chicken. Right, the skin isn't crispy anymore, but if you ate it straight away that would be crispy skin because you could see and hear that was crispy. But I'm gonna take one of these breasts off to see how this is cooked. Oh, look at those juices coming out. That'd be all that butter that was in there. Oh yeah, that has just fallen apart. That has just crumbled away. That is really, really succulent chicken. That is super, super succulent. Look at how beautiful that chicken is. That is super, super tender. Let's give it a go. Mmm. <laughs> That is really good. That is delicious. That is so good. I'm going to try a bit of the skin now because it shouldn't be, but the skin is the best bit. Mm. Oh yeah, got that garlic and sage in there. That is beautiful. I've got to eat another bit. Oh. That for me is a game changer because it's always a struggle when you're doing a roast dinner. It's having room for everything, you know, trying to do the chicken and roast potatoes and Yorkshires and stuffing and all of that and having room in your oven. Yeah, unless you've got like one of those huge like argus or something like that. I don't, I have a regular size oven. So if I can set that up to do that chicken in less than an hour, 55 minutes, I think it took, that's really, really good. That is a result. I am well happy with that. Last, but by no means least, is this pineapple. I'm really interested to see how that's come out. Just wash my knife and fork because I didn't want to get chicken mixed up with the pineapple. So let's uh, cut through here. That's certainly still hot. That was the last thing I cooked. Let's try a little bit of the pineapple. It could have had longer to be honest, I could have given it like another 15 minutes I reckon, but I'm going to try some of that outside. It's steaming hot. It looks 
lovely, especially that outside. So let's give it a go. Hopefully I won't burn my mouth off. Oh, that's a little bit special. You've got that caramelization on the outside and that cinnamon comes through. It's really, really nice. It's really, really nice. Serve that with some ice cream. You'll be laughing, mate. Absolutely laughing. That could have had another 15 minutes, I reckon. Get that even more caramelized and get that pineapple cooked all the way through. But just as it is like that, well nice. Well happy with all that. Really, really happy. That's all come out really well. And that's probably one of the best gadgets I've ever bought. It's not even really a gadget, it's an appliance, isn't it? And uh, for however much it cost, I can't remember, it wasn't that expensive really. It's great value for money. I've got like plenty of mileage out of that already. Got three great dishes there. I did the kebab as well. And it's one of those things that if I ever manage to get have people around again, is to try that out, get that out, make some lovely food on it. Got kebabs, chicken, can do vegan stuff on there, I'm sure. I'm sure you could do some vegan kebabs. There's a world of things you can do on that. Absolutely brilliant. So I'm well chuffed with that. The only downside is now, I've got to clean it. It's not fun, but really happy with that. So that's it, that's today's video. Uh, I'm going to go because this is not a comfortable angle for me and I uh, hope you enjoy it. If you did, like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell to find out when new videos are going up Otherwise, I will see you next time on Big Friendly Grub. Take care. Bye.